Um, I want to pick up on on one of the comments you you made about how <coughs> much you loved it that Ryan still has his high school friends and, yeah. and those that interacted with him. Um, because I want to talk about your friendships and, mm. and one of them going back to February 1976. Yep. Auckland Grammar School, two third formers start mm. their journey together, mm. you and Sir Martin Crow. Yep. Uh, take us back to the start of that journey. How quickly did you and Martin hit it off in third form? Oh, really quickly. Because I mean, he lived in Titarangi, but I came from um, a, a place called Wotu, which is a little... Um, uh, Wotu was a garage and a school. We lived a mile from it, and it was nine miles out of Pataru. And so I went to Auckland Grammar School when it was 1,200 kids. It's bigger now. And I knew one boy, and it wasn't Martin. How many times had you been to Auckland before going to the school? Uh, I can remember going to uh, the Scotland Test in 1975, that waterlog one. Outside of that, I can't remember going, to be perfectly honest. So, um, And so it was daunting for me. Um, um, but, you know, sitting beside a kindred spirit um, with, a, with a, a very a strong interest in sport. Um, and we just hit it off, right? Um, and... We just kept hitting it off. Um, and, you know, we developed this great... I'd go and stay at um, his mum and dad's place because he'd get about four weekends out of term. So m- most of those weekends were... Most of them at Martin's mum and dad's place, Dave and Audrey, um, out at Titarangi. And we used to get in this little car called the Flea, which was a little Toyota 800. That's all it had in it with a muffler on top because his dad was <laughs> into... God's sake. Anyway, I don't know how that bloody thing went. But... Um, and we just, you know, we would play games of uh, cricket with dice. We would play cricket with a little miniature bat and a squash ball in the hallway. It was always about cricket with Martin, obviously. And I love my cricket. Um, and I played first 11 a little bit with Martin at school. But we just developed this incredibly competitive, this friendship. But we were incredibly competitive. We played school, you know, tennis doubles together at school. We didn't ever play singles. We just played doubles. I think Marty at one stage was the school squash champ. I mean, this man was incredibly talented. Um, and you know we got to the end of it, end of our school school years in the seventh form, and we had this bet. I don't know if you were, uh, you've got that in your notes. But Marty and I had this bet as to who would play the most test matches for our country, and our respective sports. And it was brash, arrogant schoolboys, and he was much more likely to achieve that than me, to be blunt. Um, and in the end, um, you know we were both lucky enough to to do that. And Marty played a lot more tests than me, but seventy seven v forty six. Yep, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and I can remember, and I'm going to try and not get too emotional here because I'll break down, but um, at the end, t- towards when I'd finished, uh, Marty, this function I went to where Marty was doing a book or something, and um, I brought an all-black jersey that I'd signed, and basically, you know, um, you know Marty, um, you won, right, and presented. But he gave back to me a, um, a pencil drawing of Lord's his very special place for him. And it just goes too foxy. We both won. Oh boy. It's Marty's memory, sorry. Um, and that hangs at home and has pride of place because um, he's a good man. I love, I, I love the thought that two of New Zealand's greatest sports people can have a friendship like me and Stephen do that yeah. is just a normal friendship. Yeah. You know, because from the outside, you see... Two people have achieved these amazing things in sport, but you strip that all away, and it's two guys that have been mates since they were thirteen. Yeah, spending yeah. time with one another and caring for one another. It, it's yeah, it's, and we enjoy it's it, but, and we both love golf too. We play a lot of golf together. Jesus, that was competitive too. <laughs> He's a good golfer. So Ryan and I competed. I think Marty and I were worse, <laughs> um, to be honest. But um, and then you know he like he didn't mind a, he didn't mind a red wine, and I don't mind it either. Um, that's the sad thing is that as we're getting to an, uh, our age where you know it was golf was about the only thing we could really do too much of anymore. Um, share each other's company and drink wine. That it just got you know that got denied. Um, you know, and Marty, you know, he, um, you know, and, and Lorraine, he had found a soulmate. But I guess it took him a while to find, you know, the absolute right match for him. And he didn't get it. They didn't get enough time together. Um, really sad. Um, but I have, you know, rather than, even though I'm emotional and I'm sad about it, I try to dwell on the, all the good stuff because we, ha- we had some great times. 40 we years really of friendship, yeah, right? Yeah, we did. I'm interested in, like, you know, New Zealand's best batsman, third and fourth and fifth for Martin Crow. Mm. Is he is he created this image? Uh, are people at school taking notice that this kid is going to be the real deal. Like, do you remember watching him? In oh, those cricket years? was phenomenal. Um, I think in the fourth form, they went. He was in the first eleven in the fourth form. Could have even been the third form. 
they played at Christchurch Boys High and he scored 190 odd as a fourth former down than Christchurch. And it's like it was pretty apparent he had he had immense talent. And I can I can remember um in my I'm pretty sure it was my seventh form year. Might have been my sixth form year, can't exactly remember. And on a Friday night after school, Marty would go for batting practice and I was the fighter who had to chuck the ball, <laughs> bowl it, whatever. Um, I don't think I got a bat. And it was just Marty preparing. And in the space of three weekends, and I won't remember the exact detail of this, um, and I'm not sure, and we were playing men's against men's senior A team because we had a men's A size because we had a, a pretty useful first 11 cricket side. Marty got 240 odd and the next week got a five for and the next week got 140 odd or something in three weekends. I mean, oh, wow, because he, he, he wasn't a bad bowler either. Um, yeah, he was, yeah, it was very apparent to me that he was going to be a cricketing genius. And as you guys both rise to the top in your respective fields, are you always watching when you can his games and yep. is he coming to watch you? Always following. I mean, you know, as, as you get older and your own lives sort of take over and you get busy, you see each other less and less. But that doesn't change the friendship at all. It just means you have a little bit less contact. So the time you're together is almost that little bit more special. And often those times together were over, you know, a game of golf and, you know, um, a, shared gla- you know a glass of wine afterwards. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, but we, we talked about Martin Crowe as a genius. He wasn't yeah. just a genius sportsman, though, as well, right? Like, he revolutionised a lot cricket of, Max. A lot of broadcast he, he, was, stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, Cricket Max was his invention. That, yeah. In a funny way, now is probably T20, isn't 100%. it? 100%. So he was always thinking of um, um, ways, the sport that he was deeply passionate about is how can we get this better? How Because, you know, when he started to work, I guess for Sky behind, you know, not only in front of the camera but behind the scenes, it's like, well, how do we make this better? Well, you know, how does this appeal to the audience? How do we grow and make this game more interesting? And look, he was the guy who got actually first in rugby on television on Sky. That's it, what I was going to. He did that. Yeah, that was a point I was going to make. That. He understood. Yeah. The, he understood the, it. The passion that, yeah, that yeah. people have for their school, yep. their secondary school, and they want to see it. Oh yeah, to give you an idea. I mean, this may not be well known, but Marty oh, clearly was a genius cricketer, but he also played first eleven soccer at school. And then at the end of the sixth form, he said, oh, I'll play rugby. The next year, he's in the first team rugby team and scored a bucket load of tries. We had this little bit of almost ESP going. Because he's a big man at school, man. He's six foot two and, you know, he was, he was quick and competitive. And, you know, we had these little things about calls would go down the blind side in the days where I was a much more effective runner than I was <laughs> as I got older. And, and, you know, we won a championship that year and Marty scored a bucket load of tries. So, um, you Did know, he used to do the old cross kick, if I read that right? Oh, more actually go down the blind side. Right. You know, we, oh, what was called the wipers kick. Yeah, a little bit, but usually maybe down the blind side and chip or grub or something in behind because Marty's innate ability to see where space was and get his timing right to chase something through um, or run onto a short pass or drift out onto a wider pass. He's just... You know, I mean, you can see how his hand-eye was, you have to be to play at the level he had. So he had—he almost had that in rugby. He could see it, you know, that it's very, very quickly. I love thinking that maybe there was a teacher at Auckland Grammar that realised what they had. These two two little mates who were just like best friends. One would go on to be one of the greatest all-black number 10s and one would be, go on to be the greatest cricketer. Like, just to know that, that shit, these two have actually got something you think, something a little bit different. You think Mr Tucker thought that about us when we, when <laughs> we were sitting at <laughs> Hamilton Boys uh, yeah. in tutor class? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Actually, a guy to ask that might be, there's a guy called Roger Moses who um, mm. taught us English at school and then went on to become the um, at Wellington College who was the head man. And there's still, you know, there's been a little bit of contact over this long period of time with Roger. He might, might be one who saw that. Um, maybe I mean I remember a guy a Jock Bracewell mass teacher at school um, revered at Auckland Grammar School I mean the guy had a massive influence on Martin and me was John Graham mm. no mm. question you know that that I mean Auckland Grammar and all its history's only had about six headmasters I think bugger all mm. over a 150 year history mm. or something it's ridiculous how and they take a lot of time to make decisions about who's right and then they let the, they leave the leader there for a long time. And John Graham led for a long time, and he was a massive influence on both of us. You know, just the man he was. But you know, he was a he was very uh, he was a compassionate man, but a very very strict man in terms of boundaries and expectations. And he had a really nice way about knowing when to kick out the bum, and actually give you a little bit of or give you a bit of a motivational talk, or even almost give you a little bit of a cuddle. He was he was he was a great man, John Graham. Mm. We're so similar that um, those. 
you know, you, you talked to Ryan about the importance of those high school friendships, uh, the way mm. you talk about Martin and that sort of those formative years that making you the person you are. Like, it's so important, isn't it? Those, it those is. I mean, we, we have. I mean, the Orton Grammar teams, first of things we played in, um, you know, we've had um, um, reunions every 10 years. So we had a 40th one recently. Now, not quite everyone made it, but, you know, at the end of last year we got, got together and had... Um, and a mate who, who um, owns restaurants was we just went to one of his places and some guys came from around the country and some who were overseas couldn't make it but we just got to get together. Graham Henry was that coach, our manager's you know still with us. He he helped organise the whole thing. Alan Four because I went to Forley, I was the captain of the team. You know, we sort of had a twenty, a twenty five, a thirty, and a forty. Mm. Uh, it's neat that we've so and not, most of us are uh, you know we still know each other. We're not necessarily that connected because we've all got our own things we're doing in life. But when we get together, it's you know it's not hard to go back and reminisce. 